Good morning. It's a fair day out there today. This is Isaiah. And it is chapter 9. If I can get my page turned. When you get older, you can't hunt. <laughs> I should have been turned to the right page before I hit my record, but okay. This is chapter nine. I've read in uh, a few books here this morning, and I think it's given some insight more of the tribulation, especially towards the end of this chapter. We start to see that. Uh, nine reads. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her, afflict her by way of the sea beyond Jordan. Jordan has always been a representation of our walk to God, of the strife and toil that we're in on the east side of Jordan is washed away when we walk to the west on across River Jordan. That's where the baptismal took place from John the Baptist. It's where uh, Moses was uh, trying to get those people, but they had to wait for the old generation to die out so that the new generation could cross over uh, due to their sins. So the Jordan is like a, this affliction uh, by way of the sea beyond Jordan. This is like uh, every time I see words like this, I think about our future. In Galilee and uh, Nathans and the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shine. This world, this earth, this experience that we find ourselves in today, this is the land of the shadow of death because death is ever looming. It's always coming. It's our biggest and worst enemy is to deal with, cope with, process, try to find a way around this death. Now the death of the flesh, there ain't no way around except for maybe two on this earth. But uh, it's uh, this uh, shadow of death upon them have seen the light. This light is going to be Jesus Christ. Thou has multiplied uh, the nation. Bullinger makes a, a fair note here saying that this word, uh, uh, how they read the low, if he was reading this low with this type of low, changes that word into exaltation. So hence the note there I read over nation is to change it to exaltation. And this will confer with something that uh, Matthew Henry says in, the, in his notes. Thou hast multiplied thy exaltations and not increased the joy. They joyed before thee according to the joy in harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and um, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. And uh, these notes over here is probably uh, worth reading uh, from Matthew Henry, who says, What temporal uh, uh, deliverance this refers to is not clear. Probably the preventing of uh, Sinishib uh, from making himself master of Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem is a spiritual state. And what we see here today in this time is man is rising up as an antichrist, trying to make himself the, um, the, uh, the answer to the spiritual uh, conundrums of life, uh, which was done as in the day of Midian by the intermediate hand of God, done silently and without noise. 
but doubtless it looks further to the great light which should visit those that set in darkness. This light is Jesus Christ, and which it would bring deliverance to the captives. And Luke's eighteen bears uh, Luke uh, uh, four bears that out. The design of the gospel is to break the yoke of sin and Satan to remove the burden of guilt and corruption that we might be brought into this glorious liberty of the children of God. Christ broke the yoke of the ceremonial law. Acts uh, 15 bears that out in Galatians 5. Uh, and delivered us out of the hand of our enemies, that we might serve him without fear. Luke 1 bears that out. This is done by the Spirit working like fire. We're going to read that uh, here in a minute about fire. Not as the battle of the warrior is fought with confusion, noise, no uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Our weapons are spiritual. And I think everything in this book uh, refers to our spiritual state. Though we have a tendency as human beings to read it in the carnal. I see, thou hast broken the yoke off of his burden and the staff off of his shoulder and the right of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. The garments rolled and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born. Guess what child that is. Unto us a son is given. This is where the battle turns. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, when I first read this, I thought maybe this, uh, we have to keep in mind how the Antichrist rises up instead of Jesus and uh, who he takes uh, so many uh, uh, in his, uh, in his uh, delusion. Uh, counselor, but I know Matthew Henry didn't mention anything about the warning of the Antichrist that comes first, but in many books in this Bible, uh, we are warned about an antichrist. I see wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of all the increase of his government and of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with zeal uh, of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Uh, the Lord sent a word unto Jacob, and it hath lightened, lighted upon Israel. Jesus is that word. We're reading it right now. And uh, let me see if I can get another page turn here. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in pride and stoutness of heart. Uh, this is a... Uh, they say, uh, the bricks are falling down, but we will build them with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Uh, in other words, they're saying, uh, do your worst to me, God, whatever you can. We refuse to listen. Uh, we're going to be our own gods. Today, when I see the Billionaires Club, which are shaping so much of the world, uh, this is how I see them. They are the inhabitants of Samaria, that state of mind of Samaria. Uh, they are in uh, rebuke of God's word, though they read it only for uh, uh, to encourage their own wisdom to overtake God's and to uh, to somehow befall God's kingdom as their hope, so that they can have their own kingdom. I know I keep going off on this, but it's current today. This is why I keep going here. But the Billionaires Club has saw fit today to make a network of computers that we can put a human um, thoughts 
in uh, the basically the essence of the human heart and soul into a computer world, a network world. This would encapsulate man inside of a world within a world where those people uh, like Elon Musk and those the men of that type would be our God. They would have their finger on the delete button. They would have their finger on the controls to make us do and say whatever they wanted to, which basically will take the place of God. This is their desire. So they're saying, whatever God can do, we will we will build back better. We will overtake. We will overcome. Uh, we will we will rise above. They're trying to rise above God. And we read elsewhere in the book that one of the marks of the Antichrist is first they start listening to God. They start out in God's realm and playing His rules. Then they exalt himself above God, and then they claim to be God. And this is the desire of the billionaires club. It's very plain to see. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of uh, Rezin against him and join his enemies together. And the Syrians before the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. This is twofold, this open mouth. Uh, Israel is fixed. To be, this is God's chosen people. Uh, they're fixed to be devoured. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can also look at this as spiritual. That open mouth also is what kind of the word of God can come out of. That um, that nobody can um, nobody can fight against forever. Eventually, it will take its rightful place. This word of God, this holy Bible, and uh, if it comes out of the open mouth, it will melt the closed heart of an Israelite or a Jewish person who denies Jesus Christ as God and Savior. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. God is still uh, pouring on the heat to this world, to this creation, to this world that has gone against him, uh, brazenly uh, trying to exalt themselves above him. He, uh, he is offering them correction. Matthew Henry has a few notes. Uh, let's see if I can find them real quick. Uh, uh, there's the note on the exaltation. What we'll do is kind of, if anybody's interested in reading this, Matthew Henry's thoughts on there, they can pause the video. And, uh, and the word Jacob sent by a service of prophets warns before. God warns before he wounds. They have took no care to turn away from his wrath. It fell upon them as a storm of rain and hail from on high, which they could not avoid. Uh, but it is ill with a people when their physicians are their worst disease. And this is what we're talking about here. It's the physicians, it's the leaders that are uh, telling these people, uh, giving them all of the uh, direction. Just as we see today with computer geeks uh, leading the world into this new creation, how they want to recreate God's creation into what they think it ought to be. We see this in our, our new world medical care systems. We see this in our new ideology of world, one world governments and so forth. Uh, the Syrians before the Philistine behind them, let's say, uh, for all this is anger shall not turn away. Now, for the people turn noteth unto him that smiteth them. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. They're not looking to God at this point after all their pain and suffering. So look what's fixing to come up now. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel's head and tail. This is the beginning and the end. Branch and rush in one day. The ancient and the honorable. He is the head and the prophet that teaches lies. This is the, um, the billionaire's club, the rulers of the world today, the news desk that we watch every day. These prophets that lie, he is the tale. For the leaders of the people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Uh, bad news for the billionaire's clubs and the, and the world news agency, all the people that has become the prophets of today that are leading the people away from God into their own selves so they can be rich and wealthy, uh, so they can sit in that throne seat and play the part of God. Uh, bad news for them here. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall, uh, neither shall have mercy 
on their father, as Matthew Henry says, it's because usually God takes up for these, the followers, the fatherless and the orphans and the downtrodden of the world. He's he's not going to uh, he's not going to um, protect uh, these fatherless and the widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evil doer of every mouth speaketh folly, which means we've all bought in to the new world order. We've all bought in to nobody will own anything and everybody will be happy. We all want to put our existence and our happiness in your hands. I'm telling this to people like uh, the Billionaires Club who wants to change the way that God, that God created this world to work with nations and different peoples. And now we're just all trying to melt everything together and have one figurehead for government. One, uh, And it turns out to be the beast system that the Bible warns us to be about. That's a vast coming, faster every day. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And it's fixing to tell us the state that this world goes into. For wickedness burneth as fire. There's a fire coming. It shall devour the briars and the thorns, and shall kindle in the thickness of the forest. And they shall mount up like a lifting up of smoke. This is ruination we're talking about. Through, through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. There's a dark time coming. And the people shall be as fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry. And he shall eat on the left hand. And they shall not be satisfied. Uh, they shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh. You know, uh, the direction's going both ways. Uh, uh, and they together shall be against Judah. That carnal state of man. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out. Oh. Uh, Again, this book, of course, this is a very scary, creepy, uh, godless time that uh, his book is writing about. But there's also the promise of Jesus Christ is in this book. He's telling you that God has given you that son. He's given you that way out. There ain't no way out for the flesh off of this hurtling rock in space. It's, this flesh is doomed. It was born doomed, never meant to last just like as a tree was meant to give way to the seed. But the seed is our spirit. And as long as we read this book uh, every day, a little every day, that spirit is, is growing. As long as we uh, partake of that manna, uh, we will get to the promised land where God promises. And Matthew Henry makes some good notes uh, on that. That uh, uh, there's no way out for the flesh, but there is a way out for our soul. Providing... Uh, we are spiritually grown enough to receive that which Christ paid for on that cross so dearly. Uh, grandchildren, I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're kind to each other. And uh, I hope that life is uh, finds you in a better state than what this book uh, predicts at some point in the future, our future to be. And talking about the talking heads on TV uh, uh, from uh, the billionaires clubs and all the men that's vowing uh, brazen up to god and telling them to do their worst that they're going to overcome god's design by creating their own i don't know what kind of world you guys are living in now i really don't i fear for i fear for your well-being in the world that's coming in the next 10 to 20 years and as far as i know maybe even sooner than that but uh it's obvious that uh the next 10 or 20 years, there's going to be some defining, changing, taking place. Because you can only fall, get so close to the edge of a cliff before you take the fall. And uh, so I don't know what world you're living in, but I hope you're best in it. And I hope that you find solace in reason and being in these words of God. These books that are so important uh, to uh, feed your soul so that you can become lifted up uh, away from this burning that this story is talking about. 
and this uh, starvation which is not only for physical food but it is also for spiritual food if we don't read this if we, if we can't get this absorbed into our system then we are suffering from spiritual malnutrition and uh, that's uh, that's no way to go through life uh, we can be if we fill ourselves with spiritual nutrition it doesn't really matter what the the, phys, the physical body its sufferings is going through because that that spiritual nutrition will tide you over until we get to that place that God has promised us in these scriptures. I hope you have a wonderful day if uh, you enjoyed uh, reading along in these uh, scriptures. I know a lot of my ideas people won't agree with, and that's okay. These scriptures meant a hundred things to a hundred different people. Uh, so uh, everybody gets something different in them. Uh, this is just what I get given that I think uh, everything in this Word of God is written to us personally at whatever time we live in. And I think it's pretty easy to see all the likenesses of our time in these old stories. They just keep cycling over and over again. And uh, so it is. That's the, the DNA of our, of our human condition, I think this Word of God is. And it, uh, it, I think it answers to all times. So that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. And look us up. We're in the book. Come on back and see us.